I'm sorry because the people around you growing up didn't know no better when they was raising you. So to you, I truly apologize because if you was anything like me and you grew up and you grew up with a lack of emotional security, in fact, the environment around you made you emotionally insecure, giving you a hollow heart, created a, a state of lack, a state of void. And now when you have this state of lack, when you have the state of void, when you have this emotional negligence, you're going to run around and try to fulfill that space that's empty with something else. It's as if we are walking around with no heart. It's as if we are walking around with no mind. And our heart may be present, our physical heart, but I'm talking about our, metaphys our metaphysical, spiritual chakra. That shit might be locked up at this point because whatever events you went through growing up, it may be had such a powerful impact that you decided that I need to stop processing information with this organ, with this mind, because if I keep doing it, I'm not going to be able to handle it. So what the brain does, the brain disconnects that part of you or just kind of like locks it away. Like physically, your heart's going to be working, but your metaphysical heart, your spiritual heart is not going to be open to receiving influences and energies because this is how you become emotionally intelligent in your environment. You have to read the emotions in the room. Like Jay-Z said, you have to understand how to walk through a room that's for a vulture, vultures because you don't understand the intentions that other people have for you, right? But this can make you extremely cold-hearted. This can make you extremely want to separate from your environment mentally to the point that, you know, you become kind of aloof. You're not really like present in the moment because you're really just deeply stuck in a moment that happened in life or a series of moments and accumulation of moments that now have you wrapped up in this ball. And now, and what I mean by a ball is simply the perception that we have, right? Because whenever we are inside of a bubble, a sphere of perception, this is how we see reality. This is how we interact with the reality. Kind of like that 12th house system in astrology, you know, the first house, our individuality, our second house, what we value, our third house, how we interact with our environment, our fourth house, how we do with our family, the fifth house, uh, what we entertain in terms of entertainment uh, on the, and being on stage and or other people being on stage, sixth house, your work, your schedules, your routines and things like that. So we all have our own, in the, we are all individual expressions of God on earth. But as an individual expression of God on earth, you're here to go through certain circumstances and go through certain situations. Supposedly, we signed up for these things ourselves, right? Because the spirit is not looking at what's good or bad. It's just looking at relative positioning and what relative position did you accumulate in another life or energies that you committed in another life. And that's going to create the position that you're born into this life. Like, it gets pretty deep because you are a process of alchemy, right? So... Alchemy went bad when he was younger. Meaning the people around us, they were not aware. My mom and dad, they wasn't aware of what they was doing to my mind and to my heart when, when, when I was younger. Because in their time, they was exposed to that extreme energy, that extreme trauma. So all they did naturally was just pass on that trauma to their children, to their kids. If you're, uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're like me, you know, your parents asked, and this is happening to everybody, every single child in the world bro because your parent our parents is not aware of certain things like they don't actually know what they do so you have to forgive your parents but most importantly you have to forgive yourself for even putting yourself in that position because really we're just falling short on god's grace and god's mercy and what i mean by that is is the ability to let go of things that are no longer serving us that's god's grace and that's god's mercy so you don't, you don't need your parents to apologize to you. You don't need your parents to kiss your ass. You don't need um, someone from outside of you to kiss your boo-boo, your pain, and nothing like, nothing like that. What we need to do is, what I, what I did in my life was let go of those memories from the perspective of letting go of the emotions that's associated with that memory. Because if you don't let go of that emotion, that energetical static ocean, because it has electricity, What's going to happen is it's going to continuously discharge from your subconscious a charge 
to remind you of that event and to put you back in that vibrational state. Now, this is just what the mind does because the mind is just recycling the energies that you've amplified or received in an amplified way. Now, we can decide our perception of the events and we can change the chemistry behind that event via looking at that event differently. This is why the Bible says things like, you know, all things that are bad really just happen together for my good. And so you have that power as well. You can decide that everything that happens to me that is bad comes together for my good. And if you genuinely believe that and you, you genuinely regurgitate that, because all the brain is going to do is just bring up and recreate the circumstances of the situation that you've amplified or amped up the most. So if you can create, if I can create an energetic state, a static emotion, a new ocean, a new orb, a new chakra to replace that old outdated chakra, then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be, your brain is going to rewire itself, restructure its left brain side of things. So whenever it produces a thought, whenever it produces logic, whenever it produces practicality, it's going to produce something, a form that agrees with your, with, with the static energy, the ocean, the chakra, the water cycle that you have now entered into, because that is the rotation that you're revolving in as a spirit and you are the observer you are the awareness creating this energy so when you as an awareness when you as an observer is revolving around this realm of sadness you're pitying yourself you 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 you, you, you consciously recall the bad things that happened to you the things that your mom and dad said to you that they may have you said it in, in, in a spring of anger because uh, we know that most people cannot even direct the energy of anger consciously. Because really, when you become angry, you actually become demonically possessed. And what I simply mean by that is when you lack awareness of what emotion you are in, and you don't know how to direct that emotion with your left brain, with your logic, construct constructively, so it doesn't go out of whack and it creates like an explosion moment, then you're able to essentially even harness negative demons and make them do something positive with them. But obviously, based on the education system, that's because look, the Jews, they already know all this information. They already, they could have they told your mom, they could have told my daddy, they could have told his mom and his daddy before them. But again, it's not someone else's job to save you. It's your own job to save you, right? So I'm only here to provide the information that can assist you with saving yourself. But I'm not going to necessarily get up jump gun and barrel and save you now i used to do that too but the only reason why i would go so hard to help other people i would go so hard to do things for other people is because i had a state of lack in my life so whenever you have a state of lack you will put up with any flack because you ain't got nothing and when somebody throw you a breadcrumb you get super wet and you're like Damn, yo, this person gave me a breadcrumb. I never had a breadcrumb in my life. That breadcrumb might not be shit. But because of the emotional state that you're in, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that breadcrumb was the shit. I, I, I need to do that again and again and again so I can get that praise from that same person. That's like you having such a deep state of emotional lack to the point that you go for a job. You know you can get paid $25 an hour, but you expect you accept getting paid $21 an hour because you you are in an emotional lack. You you are in an emotional deficit. Now I'm talking about myself. It just happens so that other people in the world go through the same thing that I go through. So whenever you are in a state of emotional lack, you will put up with any flack outside of you because you are a needy person. You are a person who's in need of something outside of you to fulfill you. And that people outside of you, they can, they can take those things whenever. And if you base your validation, if you base, if you weight who you are based on the external scale, you will lose your internal, your, your internal power. Because now your charge distribution is based on someone else or something else outside of you. So now you've essentially handed the keys of life and death to someone else's pocket. So ladies and gentlemen, never put your car keys in someone else's pocket. Put your car keys in your pocket. This is your life, man. This is your destiny.
This is not a fucking game. This is life. And this shit is fucking serious. Because we cannot afford to be as people in a state that puts us in lack. Because when we lack, other people look at us and they say we lack. And they accept that it is normal for them to lack as well. Guys, this is deep. Because we all affect each other when we see each other. Imagine everybody walked down the street like they was the motherfucking shit. Every cell inside of you affects the cell that's right next to it. So if you walk around like you're the shit, if you walk around like you, you're confident, if you walk around with authority, if you walk around with power, you are doing life a service. You're doing everyone around you a service because now they can see and model the behavior of God because you are in the present moment embodying your highest possible good. So let's not play around, guys. Life is not a game. We need to take this shit very seriously because unfortunately, we are unconscious of how unseriously we are taking this life. Real fucking shit.